Hey, AuthorTube. How's it going? Um, as you heard by my hey, this is an AuthorTube video. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is um, kind of what I've been working on. And um, Can you see my foot? I cannot see your foot. Okay. Um, and what Zoe and I are going to be doing moving forward as far as um, marketing goes. Because marketing is a bitch. So um, that's going to be kind of what we're talking about right now. So first and foremost, um, for those of you who don't know, um, Weird Mask is moving from a print zine to an online publication for the time being, um, mainly because we just don't have the room right now to be doing the zine, and um, it's very difficult to put together in this small area that we're in right now until we start building um, our dwellings here in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> so, with that being said, um, there is going to be room for a lot more stuff on Weird Mask. So, um, I'm going to be doing a serial um, on there called Space 1959. Um that is kind of a parody slash love letter to the whole um, 50s sci-fi um, films that I not grew up watching because, again, I'm not as old as Steve Donahue, but um, that I saw as a kid. Um, so that will be um, loads of fun. And, um, I've been working on that. Um, I wrote the first chapter yesterday. I outlined the whole, whole um, first, I guess, um, what would it be, like 10 chapters for the serial, um, yesterday and wrote the first chapter. And today I wrote, um, the second chapter and then added probably about 200 words to the first chapter. And I'm probably going to go back and add um, another bit to the second chapter and do the third chapter um, when I'm done doing this. So, um, writing is going really well right now. Um, and I think the key to that was I've always had really, really big word count goals for the day. Because how we used to publish... Um, our ebooks and stuff like that was I would we had this big dry erase board and I would write on it the release date of um, a book that hadn't been written yet and as you know dry erase calendars um, at most I think only go four months in advance or something like that so I would have something coming out at least every two weeks if not every week and so I would just put like okay the book has to be out on this day so if it has to be out on this day um Zoe's gonna need x amount of time to edit it so this is the day that Zoe has to be done with the edit so in order for her to be done with the edit on that day she has to start it this day so this is the day she's going to start the edit. So if that's when she starts the edit, I have to be done with the book on that day. So that gives me X amount of time to write the book. And that's how I put my books together. And then I would look at that and go, oh, okay. <clears throat> so in order to get the book done on that day, I have to write 6,000 words a day over the next two weeks or something like that. You know, just like that was how we did everything and Zoe hated it and she constantly told me I was an idiot ain't that right sweetie I don't know if I did that she did that um so now what I'm doing is saying okay 
I'm going to write a thousand words a day, no matter what. And a thousand words a day is nothing. Um, and a lot of you are probably like, a thousand words a day, good lord, that's nothing. And it's not. Um, so what that means is that every day I'm going to be ahead of the curve. Um, so I'm constantly going to be writing more and more words than I'm supposed to, which is always going to keep me ahead of schedule and all that other stuff. Because now I could like, um, space things out, um, by how long it'll take me to do something if I'm only doing a thousand words a day. But chances are, I'll do more than a thousand words a day, so it'll be done quicker, so I could throw in little other projects if I want to do them, or um, just be ahead of schedule. Because I've always been, like, fighting from behind, like, on everything. So doing it like this is kind of exciting, because I'm going to be on top of everything, which is cool. Um, now, as far as marketing, <clears throat> um, we've taken some stuff down from Amazon lately um, because we're kind of reworking stuff. But basically, up, well, not up right now, but like things that are up, um, I have one, I have Black Star Canyon, Brain Thief, Gavel, Hitman, um, Black Market, Shallow Jallow, and those are probably the only ones, oh, and then the Hank Bradshaw books. So that's seven series that are up. Um, Black Star Canyon is the only one that's completely closed. It's, um a five novel set um, and that one we we didn't put like a ton of eggs in that basket but that was probably the most fun and the most buzz we got about anything that we had been doing and um, that started back in 2013. Um, it was a weekly serial um, in episodic form that we would release as ebooks. And there would be five episodes in a season. And we did five seasons. And um, basically, it would be every week. And then we would like start again in six months and do it every week, and then again, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> now, the problem is, is that we are very particular in what we like in book covers, and what we like in art, and so a lot of the covers, um, and while I'm talking about this, I'm probably going to be adding book covers up so you can see what I'm talking about, um, it was very minimalistic, very salbass, very, um, it was just that feel, and we both really liked that. And then through um, the Brain Thief books, which there were four of those, and the three Gavel books and the two Hitman Black books, we kind of kept that whole minimalist feel going. Um, the problem is, is that, um, the people who are buying, buying ebooks on Amazon, like, crazy, don't share that, um, love for things that Zoe and I do. So, they just want to see a book cover that they've seen a hundred times before, because that tells them that that is... A book that's like a book they liked before so they want to see like maybe a dark cover with a small cityscape and a shadowed figure with a gun running or um, I don't know what's another silly trope um, a big picture with something very little in the center um, so you could have words on top and bottom uh, 
Zoe has earbuds, and I don't know if she's really listening or not. But um, so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna kind of throw out the artsy side of our books and basically how it's going to go now I'm going to write the books Zoe's going to be the art director for the covers because she makes book covers for other authors besides me and the authors that she makes book covers for are um, more market ready than what I've been doing so um, she's going to handle that the next thing is, is that the titles of our books are very, I kind of want to say pulpy, but um, there's not a lot of popular literature out there right now that is doing what we're doing so instead of trying to like change the industry to fit us we're going to kind of fit us for the industry so um the black star canyon books originally were all just called black star canyon um season one episode one or the first season or something like that um and then i tried to kind of hide the black star canyon name and we had different titles. So there was like, They Will Die, and Severed Hands, The Creature in the Woods. Um, and then one time we had the second book called um, Warm, Yummy, Wet, and Salty, which um, probably made the book sound like an erotica probably, but it's in the book. And so if you read the book, you would go, oh, that makes sense. And it's like something that the dog thinks, um, which is something I should probably do a video where I'm actually explaining what these books are about. Um, so you guys have some clue because I'm a shit salesman, obviously, because I can't even sell to you, the viewer right now, what the hell my books are about. Um, so now what we're going to kind of do is, um, kind of keep a theme going through the titles. So, um, the Black Star Canyon books are going to be Black Star Canyon, Black Star Killer, Black Star Creature, blah, 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 blah. And, um, with the Brain Thief books, um, let me know what you guys think about this. Cause, um, I don't know about this and I don't know if Zoe has even weighed in on this, but, um, one of my author buddies that I talked to was telling me that the word brain is weird and it's not, it doesn't roll off the tongue. It's not like a, it's just a weird word. So try to get the word brain out of the title and, um, do something else with that. So, um, <clears throat> the word that I think we're going to kind of have is like the word that goes through all those titles is Hunter. So, um, it would be like the Brain Hunter or the Mind Hunter, which we can't do Mind Hunter because Mind Hunter is a show right now, whatever. Um, and stuff like that. So, f those books will all have that. And the funny thing is, is that I have a prequel series for that that I want to do and a um, sequel series that I want to do and those both have that idea of having a through line in your titles for all the books so it's funny that I thought to do that with those that I haven't written yet but the ones that it's all based off of I never thought to do that so that's kind of stupid. Now, um, another one that's hard is the Gavel books and the Hitman Black books. And the reason is, is that the Gavel is like a pulp hero. Like um, the Spider or the Shadow or Doc Savage or something like that. Um, and so we've gone 
different ways with those books with um, either calling it the gavel like really big on the cover and then have like the title underneath or having the gavel really small or not there at all and just having the title of it and then we even um, I think the versions that are up right now I don't even think it says the gavel on it anywhere and in on Amazon when you put a book in a series like it'll say in like parentheses what the series is and I think the series is actually John Page um, which is the gavel's secret identity so um, I don't know what the hell I was thinking there um, but we've just tried a lot of different things and it doesn't um, really click so um i think with those we're gonna have to do new covers as well but we're probably gonna have to figure out um a three-line title series hitman black is the exact same way um hitman black is the character and it would be so like the first book it was like hitman black lone star or hitman black the lone star of texas or um Windy City Blood or DC Death. So, um, I think we've always kept, I think one time when we put it up, we didn't have Hitman Black on the front. Because Zoe came up with an awesome Hitman Black logo that I love and an awesome Gavel logo that I love. And I want to be able to use those. And even the Brain Thief logo I really liked. Um, but... Again, this is stuff that I like, and I, I mean, my booktube channel is a perfect example of this. I like stuff that 99.999% of people on booktube will never read. Um, I think Steve, Mark, maybe Paul, um, James, I think that's it. Maybe... I don't know, Todd? I think everyone else is like, you're a funny guy, and your wife is adorable, but we will never read the shit you read, because it's crap. So, with that being said, um, my judgment should not be taken into consideration on anything um, that has to do with um, marketing my products or wanting to sell books that I like. So that's kind of weird. And then I have this like vampire series that I started like five years ago now, I think. And I wrote the first book and was planning on writing three more. And um, I guess it was too close to Twilight. Um, not the story, but time wise and vampire stuff just was not selling at all so um maybe enough times pass that i could go back to that and finish that series off um and then the shallow jallow books again this is a extremely niche 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 market that probably me and two other guys on the entire planet will think is fun and funny um like I could whittle an audience down probably better than Kevin Smith writing a Batman comic. So, um, yeah. But it's basically a parody of 70s Jalo films. 90% of you right now just said, what the fuck is he talking about? He did a, a poopy in his pants? What? Um, yeah, so you guys don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So I don't even know if I should keep doing that. I mean, those books are extremely fun to write. But maybe that's something I should just move over to Weird Mask and not mess with books up anymore. That's probably a really good idea. Hmm? Yeah. Huh? What did you say? Can you speak into my horn? <laughs> that? Um... So there's that, but then there's also a bunch of new stuff that I want to write that is very genre specific that, um, 
like I really can't wait to write. Like I have a um a buddy sword and sorcery series I want to do. And the reason why I'm like, yeah, that would be really easy is because that is like one genre. Black Star Canyon is a plethora of genres, but it's basically a, per- a police procedural in a small town that is a weird small town where odd things are happening. So it's very much along the lines of Twin Peaks, The Original Prisoner, um, Wayward Pines, Northern Exposure. It has a lot of that vibe, but it also has that soap opera vibe where there's like 20 characters or more and like they all are all involved in their own weird thing. So there's a murder. They find this body in the town at the very beginning. The mayor finds it on his on his property. And it turns out that it's um, the body of like a young woman, like an 18 year old woman or whatever. But she went missing um, 14 years ago at the age of 18. And the body is, like, completely, like, an 18-year-old. Like, it hasn't, there hasn't been any age or um, decomposition or anything like that. So that's, like, the main, like, who the hell is this girl and where'd she come from kind of thing. But then you have, like, a power struggle with the mayor and the rich guy in town who wants to, um sell parts of the town off for oil drilling. Um, but the mayor wants to keep it pristine and all this stuff. Then you have like the younger people in the town who are involved in like love triangles and, um, robberies and stuff like that. Um, and then there's some characters that are involved in some really heavy sci-fi crap while the next chapter will be a very mundane um, school scene or something like that. And then the next chapter is from the point of view of a dog. So, like, you have all these characters and all these different genres. So that book, although I think it's probably the best thing I've ever done, it's really hard to market that to somebody. Um, The Brain Thief is really hard to market to somebody because it's about a serial killer who is a college professor who um, while doing these experiments basically made himself the first undead zombie who wants to eat brains and all this stuff but he's still has all of his intelligence he still has um he's still articulate but he just wants to eat brains and kill people because he was killing people before and because he was so smart and all this other crap before any of the events of the books he would help out um the the local police department in certain crimes that would touch on his expertise at the university. Um, And in this case, now he's going around killing people, but he's removing their brains, so he will have something to eat later. And um, the cops come to him and ask him to help him find whoever's doing this. So while this is going on, it's a police procedural being told kind of from the point of view of this unreliable dude who's dead, um, he's also running experiments on um, some college students that he's pulled in from the university and has trapped in this lab at his house where he is testing different strains of what he's been infected with. Um, And you don't really know why he's doing that, but by the second book, one of the experiments got away. And when she got away, she started spreading this. So by the second book, there's like this little zombie outbreak. So then the third book comes around. So the second book's like kind of like a horror tale because it's there's freaking zombies everywhere. The third book is more of a 
political thing because the government comes in and you start finding out how much the government knows about these types of things and all this other stuff. So because there's so many different subgenres in that string of books, that's really hard to put a a label on and say, this genre is this. If you liked book A, you will love my book, book B. Um, and when Amazon can't figure out who to sell your book to, they don't. So your books will not show up in also bots on um, other books pages. Um, your self as an author will not show up um, as um, similar authors to said author over here because Amazon has no flipping idea who to sell your stuff to or to sell my stuff to, I guess. So um, we have to try to make Amazon do as much work for us as possible. And the best way to do that is to kind of play down some of the weirder aspects of the books, play up the generic or, I don't know, genre-specific um, aspects of the book and the sales copy have a title that seems like it could fit in said genre and then have a book cover that seems to be something that readers of said genre would gravitate to. And once we get all that done, we're going to be able to do a lot more stuff. So, uh, man, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. You're not even really listening, though. I took an oh, she took an ear. She took an earbud out. <laughs> she looked over to see who who no, was paying attention. Um, so anyway. Um, let me know down below what you think of all this, um, what struggles or wins you have had um, as far as marketing goes. If you've had any troubles um, marketing books that are across genres, um, or if you've had any success with book cover ideas, um, you know, this is a community and we're all trying to figure out ways to buck the system. So, um, any ideas you have would be great. So, until next time, blah, 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 blah. and I missed the damn stop button. <sighs>